channel. I hope you all had a beautiful and wonderful Christmas with your friends and family. And if you were traveling, I hope you got it to your destination safely. Now that the new year is right around the corner, you guys, I'm so excited. But to me, the new year means refreshing our spaces. And if you are an OG subscriber, you would have known that last Christmas compared to this Christmas, my bedroom is completely different. And I did do a complete DIY bedroom renovation last January. So if you are a newer subscriber, this is all you would have seen. And that's probably a good thing. But I figured since I'm sure a lot of you are in the same boat, you're wanting to refresh your space and maybe your bedroom has been the last place that you wanted to refresh and maybe it's become neglected and that was sort of our case. <laughs> um, so I went from a very dark and dreary and drab bedroom to this beautiful oasis. That's what inspired this whole bedroom was I wanted a place that was tranquil, cozy and definitely the word oasis and i think i captured it in my own definition so last year i did film the whole process but it was a month-long project so that meant there was a lot of film to go through and i was not ready to tackle that big project and actually get it edited and then eventually uploaded but mainly edited so we are just going to walk you through i'm just going to walk you guys through um everything that i did um give you some up close detail video shots of different areas of the room and i'll try and include um some of those video clips from last year of me actually renovating and doing the actual diy project so i think that that's a much better video format um to just better inform you guys and give you guys some ideas and hopefully this video gives you some confidence in renovating some of the spaces that you have neglected in your own home but before we get started if you are new here hi hello and welcome my name is olivia and here on my channel i like to create all sorts of feel good content just plain out good for the soul so if it interests you i would love for you to join my youtube family by hitting that subscribe button down below you will not be disappointed now if you guys are ready to learn how to transform a dark and dreary drab space into a light airy cozy oasis this video is for you so keep on watching Alrighty, you guys. So before you go into any DIY project, um, you know, renovating any space in your home, just remember that the idea you may have in your head at the very beginning, that may have to be the inspiration, whether it is a lack of resources, a lack of money, <laughs> sometimes a little bit in my case, um, or just you know, that doesn't quite pan out the way you thought it would. So please give yourself some patience and some grace. I definitely had to learn that while I was renovating this whole room last January. All, all of last January. So the main thing that inspired my idea behind upgrading the bedroom was this one i'll try i'll try and see if i can find it but it was this picture on pinterest where it was this cozy all white uh bed the room was pretty much all white but the sheets were all white the bed frame was all white and then the back accent wall behind the bed frame it was this beautiful brick or faux brick that was whitewashed they had these really cute little sort of lantern pendant lights on either side above the nightstands and something about that picture it was just so cozy and I'm like I want that and so I did want to do the brick wall but I soon realized that that was going to be more expensive so I opted for this absolutely beautiful um, board and batten wall. So I want to keep this video rolling. I could go on and on about every little nitty gritty detail, my idea behind a certain thing. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to keep it as condensed, short and sweet, down to the point. And I know you guys will probably appreciate that in the very end. But I had to opt, opt for the board and batten. And it was a little... It, know this is probably the most expensive project just to purchase all the materials now this trim was from Lowe's 
and I will try and leave the exact size or the link to the actual, um, I think they were eight, they were eight, maybe nine feet. I don't know. They were between eight and 12 feet long each board. I had to cut them, cut them down, but I will leave that linked below. I'll try and leave everything linked down below in an organized process. Now, again, I did this project almost a year ago, so I can't quite remember the nitty gritty details, but, but just know that each board is going to cost you between 10 to $13. I'm sure it's gone up with inflation. And you might be noticing that the trim and the wall are two different shades of white. So I want to discuss that next, which was paint. Sometimes that can be the most daunting process or decision of a renovation project. Now, while I was trying to pick out my paint colors, I watched this one channel and it was this lady with this beautiful red hair and she really demonstrated the uh, different shades of white up to just a piece of paper that's like the most starkest, brightest white. And you could really tell the different um, warm tones or blue tones or gray tones or purple tones, you know, whatever. It's so crazy. You might want to do a little bit of research, spend some time, um, and she'll actually have the, there's different paint brands, but I watched her Sherman Williams one because that's what I went, that is who I went to when it came down to buying all of my paint and paint products but eventually I came down to the color alabaster I know that's such a famous color I'm sure you've heard it in all of the farmhouse renovations or DIY farmhouse projects it's like oh this paint color this wall color is alabaster and you know what I did I did the same and that is okay uh, because it works in this room but for the most part there's not a whole lot there's no direct sun into this room so it can get really sort of dark so I thought that the alabaster really brightened it up and it's not too warm but it's just warm enough for it to be cozy and bright at the same time and so for all of the um the crown molding that was already already there I really recommend investing in some crown molding we had the crown molding put in quite quite a long time ago um but it really made a huge difference in this in this bedroom so i highly recommend it if you don't have any just invest in it you'll be so glad you did and get the thicker crown molding and so i use the same paint on the actual board and batten accents as well as the crown molding and the trim and the window um, and that was the what is it? Extra white it is the shade extra white. And that is an actual shade from Sherman Williams. And I think um, that is different from what actually comes in the can. I think when you pick the shade pure white, I think they put a little bit of extra colored paint into the actual paint can of what it actually comes comes as so just take note of that I recommend Sherman Williams because they really I've always had a great experience they try and educate you as best as they can I'll try and share some video clips of me actually using our table saw to put up the board and batten wall Alrighty, you guys, the awesome thing about the board and batten wall is it only took me about two to three hours to put up, not including caulking and painting, but just to put up. You can totally do this with a miter box and a normal handsaw. And my big recommendation to you when cutting those horizontal pieces is to cut, is to make a larger cut and then do hairline cuts as you go to get an exact fit make sure you have a level with you a good level and you don't even need a normal air nailer you can totally nail this in by hand you'll just have to do more prep work before you paint and so once your board and batten is finally up that is when you actually need to go through and caulk all of the all of the details so i wasn't able to do the the faux brick wall so i had to do the board and batten wall i got all my material from lowe's and then i wasn't able to re recreate the beaded chandeliers for the pendant lights on each side on each side of the bed that goes over the little nightstands and so 
I think it turned out even better. So I'm going to bring you guys up close to the little nightstand pendant light. So the bottom of this basket actually had a wooden base. And as you can see, I took my little drill and I just kept drilling holes into it. And as you can see, the reflection, see, here's the dimmable, whoop. Here's the dimmable light cord. What I loved about this basket from Hobby Lobby, I don't know if I've already said that, <laughs> this basket I found at Hobby Lobby, they, when they're half off, I got two for 50. But when you brighten it all the way, I love the pattern that it reflects up against the wall. That's what I love most about this basket and the color. Now let me dim it just a little bit so I can show you the amazing light bulb. I don't know if you guys can see in there. There is an amber. There we go. There is an antique amber inspired light bulb from Lowe's. I'll leave it linked down below, but it was perfect. And then here is the precious bird corbel that I found from Hobby Lobby. Again, when they're half off, you gotta snatch it up. Don't waste your money. You know, wait another week if you have to, and then get it when it's half off. But I did, it was, it's a cast iron corbel actually. Or, or well, I don't know what to call these. They're like, the, they're little plant hangers meant for, you know, your garden or outside. Um, and it was that natural brown cast iron color, but I painted it in white chalk paint, well, craft paint actually. And I did distress it just a tad so you could see the detail of the bird. So that is what I did for the light pendants on either side. And let me just tell you, as you can see, it is so, so cozy and so magical. And I really wanted to add some artwork up here. And these three pieces are from Hobby Lobby. Again, when wall decor is half off, just wait another week, get it when it's half off, get more bang for your buck. And now moving on to my favorite thing that I completely DIY'd and transformed was, were my nightstands. And they are this gorgeous green color. And how you guys are gonna hate me. You guys have asked me before what color green that is. I actually mixed two different greens. One was from, uh, from Hobby Lobby. And then the other paint was another paint brand from Michael's Craft Store. So it is my own unique shade and I absolutely love it. But the transfer, I'm gonna give, give you guys a close up here in a second, but the transfer was the Iron and Orchid. And I wanted to go with a simple pattern, nothing with color because I wanted it to work for all of the different seasons all year long. And I think I was able to complete it. Alrighty guys, here's a few clips of me working on my nightstand and again, Every piece of furniture in the bedroom was a set and it was originally that dark, glossy, brown wood stain. And since I didn't feel like completely sanding that off, I just buffed the furniture piece a little bit and then I added my paint primer. And my big recommendation to you if you're painting any piece of furniture, especially with a more matte and chalky uh, paint finish, like chalk paint, please, please, please sand very lightly between each layer. Do a thin layer of paint, especially at the beginning, and just lightly sand. It does take a little bit of this paint off, but please give yourself some patience. And I'll be sure to leave a video of how to properly put on transfer wear or transfer prints onto your furniture pieces. And so I think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. Okay. So here are my beautiful green nightstands. Now this one is mine and as you can see, I let something wet or sticky and it completely tore off the paint right there for some reason. Um, but you know, really take your time when you're painting and I'll add some video clips of me transforming this piece. But look at the beautiful pattern. It is so, so stunning. And then I have some cute decor on top. 
and then our cozy little nightstands with the night light. Now, I want to talk about my dresser, but on here we just have some of my favorite things. I love layering different shutters. We have this antique ceiling tile and then this beautiful blue mirror was originally white when I found it at Goodwill, but I painted it this beautiful robin eggshell blue color. And then this vase was actually purchased for the bedroom renovation, so I brought it back in here. Filled it with some pompous grass to really tie in that tranquility. And again, I'm filming this Christmas day, so we still have some Christmas decor up here. And then this beautiful big wooden lantern is from Not So Shabby in Holland, Michigan. And I love how I added in this little target lamp. Again, just add little aspects of coziness in little corners because at the night at nighttime it reflects so beautifully up against you know your wall. So that's my little side, and I absolutely love it. Now I turned off the light so you guys could really see just how cozy it is in the evening time. But another thing that really adds that coziness and tranquility to your bedroom or really any space in your house is adding greenery. So that means real plants, as you can see on that side of the bed, or faux plants like this really cute faux fig tree. Now a couple of branches have fallen off, so be careful. I mean, it's cheap, it's, you know, <laughs> it's fake. But I found this one for $40 at TJ Maxx. And it did come in a really cute basket already. But I put it in this basket to just really add some bulkiness to the base of it. And then to tie in the wicker. And I wanted to really add just more luxury into the this bedroom because it was really lacking in it before. So we have this little bench <laughs> or long bench. Um, that's either meant for the dining table, you know, a hallway, entryway, um, and I think it's, I, I'm using it for the end of our bed. And as you can see, it's just this nice little wicker material. I added a faux fur blanket to it, um, just because I think it adds some more textural elements. And then on this side, we do have this real ivy plant. It is a new addition, but I absolutely love the whimsy that it gives. And I placed it in this, well, I placed it in this gorgeous thrifted pottery pot. I think it's hand painted. So stunning. And then I placed it on this um sort of clay or plaster plant stand i found this one from goodwill but you know i think it came from hobby lobby or some decor store and then there is the other nightstand and that has the original knobs on it so there's a close-up of that and the print is a little bit different then on top of this one we have just to tie in some more of that pottery we have this beautiful clay head that is actually a planter so I put some I change it up for all the different seasons I did have a Christmas tree in there for Christmas um, but I think that she's so stunning so versatile and just again like you would see this it's you know it's a replica of a statue with the inspiration behind it you would see that in a tranquil garden, <laughs> you know, so it just adds on to that element. And again, just a lot of this is thrifted. It's from TJ Maxx, it's from Home Goods. You can find this stuff on sale. Heck, you could probably thrift every single one of these items. You guys, it is so easy. Now you really have to plan, you really have to be patient, you really have to sort of accumulate some of the decor again this whole project took me about a month and if you want to add some more tranquility aspects into your bedroom another easy way to do that is to do a 
a tray for the end of your bed. And I found this beautiful gold mirrored tray from a garage sale and it was only $2. So you guys, I know you might be thinking that this is an, that this is an unachievable bedroom, you know, DIY or a bedroom look. But I'm telling you, a lot of this is thrifted. And yeah, like I said, all of the, pretty much all the furniture is just repurposed, repainted. But yeah, that, that tray at the end of the table, it adds that really cozy and tranquil aspect. It sort of makes you feel like you're in a spa. Now for up above, we have um, this chandelier. We originally had a, uh, a boob light, <laughs> one of those old, here we have one out in our hallway. Let me show you. We had one of those lights. Yeah, <laughs> we had one of those lights but in here and it was just drab and not fab. So I looked on Facebook Marketplace. That's another thing to look at is Facebook Marketplace, you guys. I totally forgot about that. But the only Facebook Marketplace item in here is this uh, little chandelier. I have a matching one in the office. If you're an OG and you've been here a while, you guys know that or you you would recognize it. And they were originally silver, but I painted them spray painted them actually this black matte or maybe it's a glossy color well it's black <laughs> and it completely transformed this light fixture before it was that you know um that silver color that a lot of appliances come in and it just really looked tacky it's like that nickel color just really looked tacky but i knew that i could paint it and this pop of black really adds a different element and all those different lights we did switch it out to led um, but it really brightens up this whole space you guys know you guys know that that light fixture adds so much brightness and light into this bedroom especially on a very dreary and dark day or at night time Again, just adding little lights into your corners, adding fairy lights, really makes it so cozy. Now, if you guys have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask them down below. I would love to help you guys. That's why I'm making this video, is to show you how affordable and how easy, not, I wouldn't say easy, um, but how achievable this cozy white aesthetic is you guys you don't have to spend a lot of money to make your house look like all all the famous homes you see on pinterest and youtube and instagram just little old me was able to do this on my budget <laughs> and you know if i'm able to do it on my budget it, it, a lot of people can do it <laughs> so So that is going to be it for this video, you guys. I will close out. I may talk to you guys a little bit later, show you some more things for this video, but that is the bedroom. As we are wrapping up today's video, I wanted to discuss three key things that I believe really made um, such an important impact when it came to DIYing my bedroom or just repurposing my furniture and renovating this space. So the first thing that I hope you guys remember and take with you is to please choose the right shade of paint with the right undertone that fits your room and the type of lighting that it gets. There is this lady on YouTube, I already mentioned her before, earlier in this video, but she does uh, really uh, educate you on the different undertones and different shades of white. It is so cool and she discusses different paint swatches from the main paint companies such as Sherman Williams and Benjamin Moore. Now, like I said, I went through Sherman Williams 
when it came to pretty much everything paint wise and so the one downfall about that is they do not at least when I was doing this Sherman Williams they did not carry the little pint paint samples so if that is still the case for you and your local Sherman and Williams do not worry and they should educate you on this that's how I found out that Lowe's Lowe's carries Sherman Williams paint colors and they actually have the little pint samples. They're uh, about under $2. They're like a dollar and 70 some cents. And so when you have a few paint paint swatches in mind, do not worry. Go over to Lowe's, you know, get those little pint paint samples made. It should take be really quick. And then paint them on your walls, figure out which shade of paint looks best with your room and its lighting. Um, and then when you're ready and you have a, that one paint color in mind, go over to Sherwin-Williams, get yourself that really nice gallon of paint and paint away and take your time. Um, and really don't be afraid to ask lots of questions uh, at your local Sherwin-Williams they are so educational and they are there to help you. So I always had a wonderful experience. Okay, moving on to the second tip when it comes to repurposing your furniture. So like I said, I had a bedroom set and it was that dark stain of brown, like brown dark stain wood and it had a glossy finish. And so I, on the nightstands, I buffed it just a little bit on the outside. So there's some steps you'll want to take when it comes to painting your furniture pieces. Especially if you don't want to worry about sanding it all the way down to its natural wood. You'll want to buff out the already existing paint or stain. And then you'll want to go in with a nice primer. I know it's an extra step and it's extra money. But it is worthwhile, especially if there's already a stain on your furniture piece. Then you'll want to go in with light layers, light layers of your actual paint. And between each layer, you'll want to sand it and buff it just a little bit, especially if it's a chalkier finish, um, like if it's a chalk paint, you'll want to sand between each layer. And it should tell you that on the paint directions for chalk paint. And then I didn't do this for the bed, but I'm so glad I did this for our nightstands. I invested in the Dixie Belle top coat and you can get any sort of finish. You can get matte, satin, semi-gloss, gloss in a top coat. Again, I know it's a DIY project. You're trying to save a buck here and a buck there, but when it comes to those high quality details that make your uh, DIY project last longer, go ahead and do it. It is so worthwhile. And the, la the third and last tip is to consider taking some time out, you know, each week, maybe in the middle of the week and every Saturday, go to your thrift stores, check them out, hunt, go on Facebook Marketplace, try and find yourself a good deal. This really does not have to, you know, take a lot of money to turn any space of your home into a beautiful room that speaks to your soul. Alrighty, sweet friends, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button as I have lots of videos planned for this coming year 2023. You don't want to miss out. Don't forget to go follow me over on Instagram and TikTok at Olivia Effie. But that is going to be it for this video. I hope you all have a beautiful and blessed day. And I can't wait to see you all on my next video. Bye, guys.